Welcome to Conversations in Integrated Medicine and today I'd like to talk about prostatic health and prostatic disease and perhaps some aspects of integrated health solutions. Um, that said, um, I always give the caveat that there are usual and customary ways of taking care of prostatic disease that obviously the practicing physician or healthcare giver uh, must be aware of and should ideally disclose to the patient. But here we have a circumstance uh, that I feel uh, comfortable talking about where every man, if he lives long enough, will develop some form of prostate disease. In fact, the famous revered surgeon Hamilton Bailey wrote in his textbook that 92% of all men who reach the age of 92 years will develop prostate cancer. Now, fortunately, it's not all prostate cancer. Prostatic symptoms, including difficulty with urination, dysuria, burning, dribbling, uh, frequency of micturition, these types of symptoms, uh, which tend to occur uh, in, a, in a kind of almost chronic manner in most mature men over the age of 50, um, is often due to benign hyperplasia of the prostate. And I want to indicate the correct terminology, which is hyperplasia. What we see is a hyperplastic enlargement of the prostate that is probably um, a process somewhat dependent upon the intermediary metabolism of, of testosterone. But of course other factors operate. So how do we promote uh, a healthy prostate? Or how do we engage in prostatic health? Because it clearly is a very common problem. But I'd like to dispel a few myths. It's stated in the medical literature that prostatic enlargement does not interfere with sexual function. Personally, I don't believe that to be the case. I've seen people who've actually effectively managed prostatic enlargement, even benign hyperplasia of the prostate, and seen some improvement in their sexual function, most notably ejaculation. So again, I'd, I'd like to point that out and I'd like to indicate that you know so common is prostatic enlargement that we need to be very vigilant and take some real preventive action because it's one of the most common disorders causing premature disability among mature men and of course we have to deal with prostate cancer which really is is a very common type of malignancy uh, which is particularly challenging to African Americans or uh, black people uh, especially in the Caribbean. So here we have a, a real health challenge with a common disorder. Uh, more than 100,000 uh, cases of newly diagnosed prostate cancer at various stages. And we do know that early diagnosis and intervention results in an improved prognosis. But in the integrative health model, uh, I'd like to look at uh, the promotion of prostate health and perhaps those things we can do to prevent prostate cancer. And I think the first issue is to look at lifestyle and things associated with prostatic disease include cigarette smoking. We see obesity as playing a major role in prostate cancer where perhaps the prevalence of prostate cancer may not be identifiable as more common. Certainly it seems that the clinical course of prostate cancer in the obese individual is much more serious and much more malignant. The, for want of better terminology, than it is in men of normal weight. Um, obviously, um, good lifestyle promotes health of all body organs, so I don't want to get into a sermon about lifestyle, because I think what we have is a lot out there in nutritional support for the prevention of prostate disease. And what has starred out there is the work of uh, Finnish scientists, scientists from Finland, uh, especially Dr. Adlerkreutz, who has given us a wealth of information on the benefits uh, that soy has for prostatic health. And I think the work is unquestionable, showing that soy uh, isoflavones may play a major role in uh, prostate cancer delay or somewhat in prevention. And again, <clears throat> I'm using scientific literature, I'm not making claims treatment claims for isoflavones, but let's just look at, uh, at the circumstances. This whole issue of soy-enriched diets has been used as an explanation as to why the prevalence of prostate cancer in countries like Japan 
is much lower than it is in the United States. But of course, uh, hereditary ethnic tendencies for a higher incidence of prostate cancer all play a role. Now, good general nutritional support is important, and we see papers written on prostatic specific vitamin treatments. Um, we saw that in the New England Journal of Medicine, we saw evidence that certain amino acids may be beneficial. So nutrition in prostate cancer is certainly uh, a well-developing area uh, with some requirement for a substantiation and further fulfillment. But what we do know about uh, prostatic nutritional support is these days we have so many putative agents that benefit prostate health that prostate health supplements have become much more complex in their formulation rather than dealing with standard saw palmetto or Pygeum africanum. And in fact, Pygeum africanum, africanum is a prescription drug in some countries in Europe and a popular prescription drug uh, for benign prostatic hyperplasia. So I mentioned a litany of agents for nutritional support and uh, I will list them uh, and tell you that they're quite vast and that there is a variable evidence base to support the use of various agents. So palmetto has been favoured most often uh, in concentrated or extract forms uh, where uh, contents of beta cytosterol are very important. Pygeum africanum has been used in extracted forms and there are some controlled clinical studies showing it to be beneficial. Obviously beta cytosterol complexes which are found in saw palmetto and other plants uh, are believed to be quite useful. Prostatic specific amino acids uh, are in their putative form L-alumine and L-glutamic acid. The role of vitamin E as an antioxidant, natural vitamin E, is quite clear. We have obviously other prostatic specific vitamins that I alluded to, namely vitamin D3, vitamin B most notably, thiamine, niacinamide, folic acid, and biotin. Uh, certainly certain elements uh, out there such as calcium, magnesium, iodine, uh, selenium, have all been proposed, including micronutrients like molybdenum. Uh, vitamin A seems to have played a specific role in benefit, and botanicals like stinging nettles have been useful in urinary symptoms. Uh, we have sources of omega-3 fatty acids, so uh, perhaps fish oil again stars as a generic support for prostate health, but people have used things like pumpkin seed, uh, perhaps as a source of other agents apart from omega-3 fatty acid precursors. We have antioxidants that may be of value like lycopene, isoflavones from soybeans as I mentioned earlier, zinc, in fact the prostate is very, very high in zinc concentration, um, and zinc supplementation has certainly been uh, proposed. Uh, standard oxidants like antioxidants like vitamin C, I mentioned the B series, and uh, even suggestions that iron supplementation may be valuable, but a lot of integrated medicine physicians like to avoid iron supplements in um, more mature males because of the uh, putative association with cardiac disease or cardiovascular disease. Then, of course, the other micronutrients of putative value include odd things like copper, boron, and vanadium. So, the list I'm giving you is just wow. But the key ingredients to look for here are saw palmetto and pygeum, uh, together with the correct kind of vitamin uh, supplementation. And uh, this is certainly uh, the new revolutionary approach, which shows us the idea that we use all evidence-based things together as much as we can in a synergistic type of mode or setting in the general management. But of course, uh, I stress there are effective drugs that fall into the category of usual and customary treatment that must be reviewed by the integrative practitioner. Thank you for listening.